Okay, I just went back a couple of slides. I just uh, don't know if I emphasized this in the last video, but these three um, mechanisms, as they're called, for, for heat, uh, heat flow is, is when there's a temperature difference. Once there's no temperature difference, these stop. So um, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, let's see, I, I think I was on um, radiation. So this is the only one that can cross a vacuum. Uh, for example, the heat that we get on the Earth uh, due to the sun is, is, is this form. It's a, it's a form of radiation. Um, all right, so let's keep going here. Uh, let's see, some of this we're not that interested in. Um, the thing, uh, the equation that we just had, or had a little while ago, that, about uh, specific heat, uh, remember the, the heat is equal to um, the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. Um, there can be a time where uh, heat is added to a substance and it does not change the temperature. Okay, uh, in that particular case, there's what's what we call a, a phase change, and uh, you know most of us are obviously familiar with a phase change when ice melts and becomes liquid water, or when liquid liquid water boils and becomes uh, steam, or, or, or sometimes called uh, water vapor. And uh, that involves what's called the latent heat. So there's another equation that describes phase changes. Okay, and so, um, and and uh, this, this this graph is showing, uh, for example, you know, uh, ice at, at at a low temperature, and then you raise the temperature to the melting point of ice. The melting point, of course, is uh, zero degrees Celsius, um, and then you uh, so, so you have to add a certain amount of heat. And then once you've done that, you've melted all the ice, and then and, and of course this is a, this is uh, related to the amount of ice that's there. Uh, the you know the more ice you have, the more heat you have to add. But notice it doesn't change the temperature during this during this phase transition. And then once all the ice is melted, um, then the the uh, the um, the liquid. The, the now turned into liquid uh, will start to you know if you keep adding heat um, the the uh, the temperature will rise uh, of the of the liquid of the now liquid and for water it rises to a point uh, what we call the boiling point and on the Celsius scale that's a hundred degrees and then um, so 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 this is the this is the phase transition this is what we would call boiling once you read it reach a hundred degrees um, for example, think about like a pot of water on the stove. Once it reaches 100 degrees, you know, the, the steam starts coming out, bubbles, um, and, uh, you know, you see some turbulence going on in the water. But it doesn't, all, it doesn't like, instantly change to, to, to steam. In fact, you don't want that. Um, you don't want all the, uh, when you're cooking, you, you don't ever want to go beyond, much beyond this, this point right here. Um, you you want to boil, obviously, you're cooking something, uh, but you want the water to, to remain, for the most part, liquid. Um, if you were to just leave the, and, you know, this is not something you'd ever do, you just leave the, the, the pot of water on the stove uh, and, and you don't reduce the heat, you, you keep adding heat, adding heat, adding heat, and what's going to happen is you'll have a phase change, um, a complete phase change, so all that water will turn into steam. Now, if you have, were to somehow capture all of that uh, steam or water vapor, as it's called, um, and then continue to raise, uh, so, sorry, continue to add heat, what that would do to the to the to the steam or water vapor is it would actually raise the temperature beyond a hundred degrees. So it would be, you know, steam at some uh, temperature much greater than, uh, or or at least greater than. Um, 100 degrees Celsius. All right. Um, let's see. So, uh, the, the when you go from a liquid to a to a solid or a solid to a liquid, that's called the heat of fusion. Um, if you go from a from a gas to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, that's called the heat of vaporization. So the latent heat gets the symbol uh, L for latent heat and it's L sub F for the latent heat of fusion and L sub V for the latent heat of 
vaporization. And if you're going from a solid to a liquid, you're adding heat, and so L sub L sub V, uh, sorry, L sub F is positive. If you're going from a liquid to a solid, like you're freezing some water, let's say, you have to remove heat to do that, and so um, L, L sub F is 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 going to be negative. And this sim similarly with L sub V, the liquid he heat of vaporization. Um, if you're going from a liquid to a gas, you're adding heat, so L sub V is positive. If you're going from a gas to a liquid, um, that's uh, condensation actually is taking place, and so that you're removing heat to cause that to happen. Um, that's what happens, for example, when it rains. Uh, all right, we won't really cover this one, the sublimation. Um, I'm, I'll just briefly mention it and uh, move on. All right, um, here, let's skip this. Uh, whoops, Th thermodynamics. Um, so really, let's talk very briefly about the first law of thermodynamics. And there it is. Um, it just says that the heat at a higher temperature um, plus, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the heat at a higher temperature minus the heat at the lower temperature is exactly equal to the work that you get out. So um, people, humans, uh, about oh, about 200, 250 years ago or so, um, figured out that this natural process of heat flow, when heat goes from high temperature to low temperature, that there was a device, a, a heat engine, in fact, um, where you can tap off some useful work. And so the work is uh, equal to Q high minus Q low. So that's also known as the first law of thermodynamics. And that's true for one cycle of the heat engine. Um, it gets more complicated as you go on. And then um, let's just briefly talk about the second law, which we, we've already talked about uh, a little bit before, is that heat never flows from a cold object to a hot object. So that's one way to look at it. And then another person discovered that um, you know, if you go, you go back to this idea, um, heat will never by itself flow from, from a cold object to a hot object. Heat doesn't go this way by itself. You can force it to go that way. Of course, that's what refrigerators do. Um, but of course, you have to put work into, into the device and, you know, you know, you have to engineer it just, just right to be able to do that. And this is also air conditioning, right? Air conditioning, um, uh, you know, cool, cools off your home, ho hopefully, uh, on a hot summer day. All right, uh, and so, so uh, the last, the last thing. Um, so, so the, these two were were discovered by different people um, in the in the nineteenth century, and uh, the last thing uh, was really towards the end of the nineteenth century, the beginning of the twentieth century, is they realized that there was really just one law of of the set this thing called the second law of thermodynamics. And you can actually think of it in terms of order. And so what, the, what, what, uh, what people realized at the beginning of the 20th century is that uh, these two are equivalent to saying natural processes tend towards a greater state of disorder. And the, the state of disorder is called entropy. And... Uh, all right. Besides the uh, examples that I'm going to do, uh, that's that's about all we're going to cover in chapter four.